Good morning students. So, this week we are discussing how we can use NMR in drug discovery and then like in last lecture I was discussing how we can use in understanding the drug met, uh, NMR in drug metabolism. Right. So, we, we discuss that drug metabolites and it passes through various um, body fluids. We can take those body, body fluids and in vitro detect the level of drug and drug metabolites. Uh, some of the obvious body fluids are urine, the plasma, serum, uh, like a sweat, it can be spit, many of these body fluids can be used for understanding the drug metabolism. The two famous one are plasma and uh, serum and also urine that can be done. So, NMR can you give, NMR can give you quantitative assessment of drug metabolites. Also we looked at what are the nuclei that can be used for detecting drug metabolism. Uh, the famous one uh, can be proton and it can be carbon, then the best one appears to be fluorine in terms of sensitivity, in terms of the dispersion and the relaxation time. The problem with proton was like it is overcrowded by already the intrinsic environment that comes in body uh, fluids like urine. So, getting the clear signal from drug uh, which is very low concentration is can be often difficult. So, you need to combine uh, with a 2D experiment when you can transfer the polarization uh, from proton to X nuclei and detect on X nuclei to have a more clear understanding of drug metabolites. But those were all in vitro experiment. Can we also think of detecting the drug metabolites in in vivo system, right? So, in vivo, what is the good part of in vivo system that like one can measure the drug plasma level, um, uh, drug level in plasma, but that does not always reflect the drug concentration at the receptor size. Right. So, plasma is circulating, right? This is it is in circulation, how much drug is circulating. That is what we are measuring when we measure the plasma, uh, plasma and drug concentration. But what happens the effective concentration that is reaching to receptor site that will not be directly reported once we measure the drug from the plasma. Right. So, we need to have a method that can allow us to measure the concentration of a drug and their metabolites in C2 and that will be very useful, right. We can measure wherever the drug should go and what is the concentration of that drug. If we can measure that, that will be wonderful. So, these experiment can be done if we actually do the in vivo study of drug metabolism. So, the good part of, of the in vivo study of drug metabolism that measurement of drug and metabolites can be done in the target organ wherever uh, wherever drug is going can be directly measured from there right and the another good part that it can be repeatedly done on the same patients right so reproducibility or or the variation that will come from batch to batch or measurement to measurement can be also accounted for and this is non invasive you are not taking anything out of the body you are just using some probe which is NMR based probe in non-invasive manner to detect the drug concentration at the site of its action. So, that is the good part of in vivo study of drug metabolism. Let us go ahead and look at how we can do that and wh what we can do it. The, the some drawback of this in vivo drug metabolism that generally it is very sens uh, insensitive like it is it's a sensitivity is one 1 to 10 times less than um, in vitro concentration. The another big problem uh, is like since these drug metabolites are not freely tumbling in the solution. So, that means there is a unrestricted mobility because of the because of surroundings. It come can be coming from different proteins, lipids, muscle whatever it is. And since the mobility is restricted, so you can understand that lines is going to be broad. So, if in vitro we have a sharp line in vivo we can have a broad line that is the one of the limitation of doing experiment in vivo because of restricted tumbling or restricted mobility. Now, 
and because of the sensitivity is low and also the lines are broader, you require a longer data uh, acquisition time, right. So, many like uh, many scans you have to do. Now, another problem can be like uh, the signal can come from various anatomic, uh, anatomical origins, it will not only come from the drug in some cases like a fluorine which is a unique nuclei that is not found in the body. If your drug is fluorine level then you can get a signal exclusively coming from fluorine otherwise if you are detecting say proton or carbon 13 it is, it is obvious that signal will come from different uh, anatomical origin molecules right. So, and the another problem will be resolution will be poor. So, chemicals uh, chemically similar compound uh, will be difficult to distinguish. So, the good part is in vivo detection of F19 and that can be actually detected and it has been done extensively of 5 fluorouracil which is a cancer drug and its metabolite has been estimated around 0 0.05 uh, millimole per gram that is what minimum you can uh, detect it from in vivo experiment right. So, so, some of these nuclei are really beautiful for detecting uh, the signal of drug or drug metabolized in in vivo setting right. So, so that is the application uh, we can think of of, of F19 based and we can look at what else we can do. So, let us start with a F19 based nuclei. So, just to remind you why in F19 if you uh, go few slides back in the last lecture we had um, just given you the idea about F19. I will just repeat few of those. Yeah, so F19 the first good part of this it is a half nuclear right uh, it is a spin angular momentum is half it is a relatively narrow line sensitivity is very good like about uh, 83 percent of proton it is a 100 percent natural abundance and the most important part that it is a short relaxation time T1 that means you can repeat this experiment very fast uh, and the spectral uh, width is very large. So, you can distinguish the signal coming from different origin of F19. So, because of all these good part that F19 has, it can be also used beautifully and exclusively in in vivo setting. Okay. So, <coughs> so in F19 study were used in anesthetic and psychoactive or anti neoplastic drugs and like what, what these drugs has the F19 nuclei and it was used for detecting in vivo. So, the distribution of anesthetic in the brain can be used or even the pharmacokinetic of their elimination uh, are used and uh, how it is being done it is still uh, subject of controversy, but it can be used like you can detect it where it is going and uh, how the pharmacokinetic is playing role. So, the feasibility of in vivo F19 NMR um, in human has been demonstrated. One of the good example of this drug called fluotaxin which is wi widely used for antidepressant uh, drug. So, this F19 drugs were used and then you can see that this is the uh, this is the signal coming from. So, just to give you an perspective. So, once you administer this drug in the in vivo setting it can make some adduct or it can it can do some chemistry to make some other compound right it is it, it will also get metabolized it can mix up with something. So, this drug called fluoxetine actually make an product called norfluoxetine and these two are present in this in, in vivo setting. So, you can see that there are two peaks coming in the in vivo setting coming around say 61, 62 ppm one is from uh, fluoxetine and uh, another is for norfluoxetine and, and if you detect the same thing in vivo you get actually the two peaks 
and these are the two peaks reflected. So, the first it gives confidence that we can get the clear cut two peaks. If you look at uh, this is these are little bit shifted than these. So, the chemical shift can be different because you can see uh, you can imagine that environment will be different and that is how chemical shifts are different. But good part is that since there are only two molecules which has a fluorine, we can conclusively confidently detect this drug in in vivo setting. Now, if, if we have done that then what next we can do? So, we can do the NMR study on this fluorinated drug some like suppose 5 fluorouracil. So, yeah, so uh, 5 fluorouracil F19 can be um, used because of various reasons. So, first one can high dose administration can be done of these compounds and then fluorine rema uh, atom remains intact, right. So, fluorine is not mixing or it is not changing. So, even during the biotransformation, even during the metabolism, F19 remains intact and that wherever they go in the metabolic cycle, you can detect it, take the, take the uh, signal coming from the various body fluid and you can detect it or even in in vivo setting you can do that. So, fluorine atom remains intact during the biotransformation and F19 signal can be therefore displayed over a large spectral width without any overlap and one can detect it. So, you can see here we are getting the fluorouracil and fluoride ion, but some other product we are also getting like a uh, fluoromelanoic acid um, semi aldehyde or fluoroacetaldehyde. So, acetal these are mixing up and making some kind of another secondary metabolites, but still the signal remains for fluorine signal remains intact. So, you can get this idea where the fluorine is going, what kind of reaction it is doing and then what kind of product it is making and one can detect it, right. So, so uh, actually one can even do the fluorine 19 spectrum for, for the perforated body weight. Uh, so, you can take the F19 here again uh, the 5 fluorouracil, the fluoride ion and various other products that are coming. So, this experiment was done what the drug was dosed to a rat and then his um, uh, actually liver was isolated and perfused and it, it was found that the various catabolites that are coming from here from the uh, rat liver, uh, the catabolites of FU that fluorouracil is not a fluoro beta alanine, but metabolites continue to lead to new catabolites like a fluoroacetate or fluoromelanoic acid um, semi alcohol. So, these are metabolites that are coming up. So, what we are learning here? We were injecting this 5 fluorouracil and then it is going in the body doing reactions and making new products. So, that new products we are detecting from say rat liver. Now, we are trying to prove the chemistry goes on when the these drugs are administered, what new products are made. So, all these products we can essentially we can detect it. So, you can see here is the concentration of FU, here is a fluoride ion and whatever various products that it made one can detect it and understand what new catabolites are made like a fluoroacetate or fluoromelanoic acid semi alcohol these all uh, products are made. So, <coughs> so, essentially in vivo fluorine 19 uh, NMR has been used to monitor the FU metabolism in the liver and it can be also say used for like understanding the metastasis of colorectal cancer patients. So, essentially what you have to do? like a patients who are treated with a continuous low dose of intravenous infusion of FU until the point of, of refractory of the disease. And then uh, you, you are doing something like you are putting the patients doing the localized MRS which is called magnetic resonance spectroscopy and detecting the level of FU that is going on. And then you probably uh, inject some intervention like interferon alpha. And then also you looked at how it is modulating the FU activity. So, in one case you are just putting FU looking at the signal that is coming from the patient. 
then subsequently you are dosing with interferon alpha and looking at the activity of uh, FU how it is changing. So, these experiments were done right. So, <coughs> F19 spectrum of the liver metastasis from colorectal cancer a patient treated with 5 FU were taken. You can see the signal that is coming 5 FU and some catabolites that is coming and after treatment uh, the catabolites that came out was alpha fluoro beta alanine. So, you can see here is the catabolite. So, after um, some days actually the, the catabolites that coming out prominently. Now, you are what next step was done interferon alpha was given to that patient and again looked at what kind of, of, of the um, response it is coming. So, 5 fluoro uracil plus interferon alpha was given and you can see here was the anabolites that, that sorry that started and <coughs> you are getting the 5 fluoro u and plus catabolite. So, you are essentially saying that how the intervention changes the metabolism in a quantitative manner if you are detecting these signals coming from the patients. So, this is the good part of doing the drug metabolism in vivo. So, one can detect what signals comes out and the what is the pathophysiology or all those will be understand by doctor. So, it helps actually medi medical practitioner to understand the metabolism that goes on a patient and they can tune their drug dosage or, or, or drug regime to better suit to a patient. So, that is what it helps actually understanding the path that drug will take the how metabolism is getting affected in a non-invasive manner. So, essentially um, patient is going in this machine doing the MRS and giving you the response from the localized place of liver where metabolism happens and then doctors can decide what needs to be done in case of, of the altered metabolism. So, that is a good part. Now, this um, in vivo detection is called say MRS. So, you can put the patient in MRI scanner and then do the MRS magnetic resonance spectroscopy you can detect various metabolites that are coming. So, here I am showing you from brain various like a choline, keratinine, uh, GABA, glutamate all these signals can be det detected. So, this gives us confidence that anything that changes in brain we can do localized spectroscopy called MRS and detect what kind of altered metabolism we, we have. So, I will give you some example of, of altered metabolism which can be detected using MRS. So, what essentially it is done <coughs> one has to put the whole organism or whole animal in the magnet and you apply some magnetic field NMR radio frequency on, on this say right and in the magnet you are saying so without any magnet all spins are randomly oriented with the magnet spins are now aligned and that gives you uh, the signal that is what we know from this course that one has to put the observe uh, whatever being observed in the magnet and that gives us signal. So, if you are putting a hole right and taking the slice of his, his brain like a slice means like a voxel or something like that in MRI scanner getting the signal exclusively coming from there one can know what is going on the rat brain or even for an example any organism. So, one can combine this MRI with MRS, MRI gives you image like you know this is not a course for MRI, but just giving you a very brief idea you can get the uh, magnetic mapping of the brain using MRI um, magnetic resonance imaging. So, you can get the image and from the section of that image if you do the MRS magnetic resonance spectroscopy similar like experiment that we did uh, that we had discussed in this course take the signal do the Fourier transform you get the MRS spectrum like suppose from this section of the brain you can get all the metabolites that, that are coming like a choline, the glutamate and all those. And now this actually is essentially used in the drug metabolism right. So, if this is a normal patient this is the response if some drug has reached here the response will change and that is what we will be detecting it. So, MRI and MRS combined gives the whole magnetic mapping of the body and what kind of metabolism happens. 
Similar thing can be done say P31 MRS of, of the human liver. If you take the human liver, take a phantom and transverse MRI around the liver, you can get various phosphorus com containing compounds like a beta ATP, alpha ATP, gamma ATP, NADPH, uh, all these signals will be there, uh, phosphocholine, phosphoester, PI, many of these can be detected. Now suppose I am giving an example, so suppose one person is exercising right very vigorously and you, uh, you take the MRS of that person. So some of these energy currency will be metabolized, so you will see the response or the ATP concentration will be going down. Suppose you want to give a drug and look at the metabolism of that, what will happen? So suppose this drug is phosphorus con and or it enhances the energy metabolism. You will see that the ATP currency, uh, the energy currency like ATP, ADP, their concentration will be going down. So that means if we combine this in vivo detection, one can find it out how the concentration of each of these metabolites are changing in case of exercise, in case of drug uh, administration and all those. So combining the in vivo detection of, of these signals helps us in understanding the metabolism as well. Another example I want to show you what happens in rat brain. So you can see uh, which the rat brain which has a seizures, you can see lots of this energy currency showing very high signal compared to the baseline. Uh, one, can, one can have that these concentration or these signals looks slightly higher in case of the seizures brain. So that means brain becomes hyperactive and this I have taken from, from Patel et al, uh, general of neuroscience. So you can see lots of signals seems to be hyperactive, uh, some of those phosphocaratinin is however lower but many of these seems to be altered. So you can integrate these peaks, find it out which the phosphorus con containing energy currency becomes hypermetabolites in case of seizure brains and this was done uh, using MRS. So if you administer a drug and look at how the drug impact on the activity of the, of the brain, you again record a spectrum and look at the energy currency and the signals coming from that that helps us what drug did. Although these are not detecting directly the drug metabolites, but we are looking at the response of that drug on the metabolism of this energy currency. So that is what you can use the in vivo detection of these metabolites um, to understand the drug metabolism. Now another example I am showing you for 1H MR spectroscopy for a, an A beta, which, uh, A beta containing mice. So A beta is a protein that aggregates in the Alzheimer's brain. So the mice was basically induced with Alzheimer's and look at some of the signal that should come uh, with a wild type and the Alzheimer's type of brain, taken a section and did the MRS. And uh, if you look at some of the signals that were different in the like a uh, glutamate was same, NA was same, but look at some of these seems to be uh, different, right, seems to be different. So, what it shows that in case of Alzheimer's, the, the, the metabolites that are present in the brain are different. This gives a very useful insight how actually disease changes the metabolic state of the brain and that essentially are used in, in understanding uh, the, the metabolism in case, altered metabolism in case of disease. Okay. So here one can see it in vivo NMR spectrum of a cerebral cortex in, in the mice that are affected by the um, Alzheimer's. One can see the concentration of these seems to be lowered, here again it seems to be lowered. So differential concentration of like uh, metabolites gives us an important insight of altered metabolism uh, or in the rat brain. Now rat was smaller so you can put directly in the magnet, for human it is little bit difficult but that gives an idea how your drug regime or drug dosing should change. So this uh, study on animals will be very crucial in understanding how we can translate this idea in, into, uh, into the human 
uh, human case. Okay. So, at the end I would just want to uh, conclude in this week uh, we started from understanding the drug design and then we went ahead and looked at how the NMR can guide us in having a better drug design, fragment based drug design, pharmacophore based drug design, uh, various drug design uh, and once the drug we have designed uh, just I wanted to look at whether the drug is, uh, we wanted to explore whether the drug is effective, how metabolism is impacted and how NMR can help in understanding the drug metabolism. So, slowly we went into uh, the drug metabolism study where we looked at the in vitro part how we can use the body fluids to quantify the drug metabolism and today I just briefly touched upon how we can combine the in vivo approach for understanding the drug metabolism. This part of the NMR is called MRS magnetic resonance spectroscopy which helps in understanding the drug metabolism in vivo. This is a this is a field in, in itself you are interested if you are interested go and explore this. This is a beautiful field to understand the drug metabolism or metabolism in general without doing any surgery. So, just in vivo in non-invasive manner how you can use this beautiful concept of, of MRAs for understanding what is happening in body. So, with this the next week we are transitioning into the another aspects of a structural biology in NMR called solid state NMR and that is essentially whatever protein, whatever protein cannot be solubilized, neither crystallizable that will be looked in using solid state NMR. So, transitioning from the liquid state to solid state will be done next week and that is going to be the last week for this course. So, looking forward to have you in the next week course which is solid state NMR for biological molecule. So, thank you very much and looking forward to have some exciting questions from you and a vibrant engagement with you during the uh, live session. Thank you very much.